In the book, the big tree kept on waiting and waiting. I have to wait a lot too. I wish I could do something. We're still getting new journal entries, even though Yona's gone. Might just be the old ones she gave us, I don't know. Well, she didn't give it to us, but yeah. Oh, I forgot to check freaking Seafront if they have seeds. Whatever. Hey! You know, you kind of smell like my boyfriend. Your boyfriend smelled rugged and handsome, huh? Heh, <laughs> yeah he did. Of course, that was a long time ago. Five years ago, poof. He just upped and vanished. I kept waiting for him, but I have no idea where he went or if he's... Hey, wait a second. You're that guy who does whatever people ask him to do, right? Well then, go find my boyfriend. Money, money. Hey, people usually ask nicely. And I have no idea what your boyfriend looks like, much less where to find him. Well, he always wears this flashy gold necklace, so maybe you can start there. Um, please? Wonderful. Off we go on a hunt for a man with a gold necklace. Not the strongest of leads, that's for sure. I knew it. This is what I was talking about. If only our harvests weren't so Gold poorly. necklace. Oh, you. Yeah, I'm kind of busy now. Where would we... <sighs> five years ago, though. That seems to coincide with the attack. So, to be honest, I feel like if we find him, it's probably gonna be a shade. Yeah. Medicinal herbs all day every day, but what about this one? Where can we find titanium alloys aside from the junk heap? I don't want to go back there, but I only need one more. I only need one more. God damn. Okay, um, the library for the treasure map. Okay, good, good, good. We're making progress. Just trying to clear out some of these quests before we get to the forest I fear of myth. The next card fate holds for us. If I were a treasure map, where would I be? Ask Popola? Hmm. Mm. Thank you, but I need to. I need to find a map. Maybe the person up here? Oh! Hmm, this book is pretty beat up. As a fellow tomb, I find this a sad sight to behold. When will books receive the respect they deserve? When they stop giving people lip. Calm down, I'm sure I had a happy life. Let's see here. Hey, is this a map? It is a map, and one with many unusual markings at that. Perhaps this is a treasure map, like that strange fellow was referring to earlier. Well, this one is damaged as hell. I can't make heads or tails of it. I wager the damaged sections can be repaired. Perhaps the facade strange thing store would be able to assist us. Let's give it a shot. Hmm. <laughs> we'll save that for later and we'll head off to the Forest of Myth. Sup? Oh, that guy with the gold necklace? Yeah, how could I forget? Some folks saw him heading for the Forest of Myth. Awesome. Forest of Myth. Maybe we should pay a visit. That's exactly where we're heading. Sup? Oh, okay. Alrighty. This is the village from the dream. Yeah. Truly a nightmare I hope never to experience again. I hear you. Coming from a book. You should like words. Ooh. Hang on. Were the trees always like that? There's only half a tree left. Oh. I honestly don't quite remember. Ah! <laughs> Hi, Mayor. Huh? You want to know if anything unusual is happening? Well, I have been feeling a rather strange presence whenever I visit the Divine Tree. The Divine Tree? Yes, it's a legendary tree that exists in the heart of our village. Did you investigate the cause of this presence? Uh, no, not really. And why not? 
Well, we're not... We're not really supposed to go near the tree, except for prayer. And why is that? I don't know, alright? It's just how things have always been. Weird. Unspoken rules. But we can go near. Are the people still living here? Seems so. Ooh. Hello? Huh? Yes, I saw a child a while back. I think he was playing over by the divine tree. Everything is to do with the tree. <laughs> uh, that's this one, right? The big one right here. Okay. Wait, what? A man with a gold necklace? You know him? You bet I do! Goddamn bastard ran off with my wife! <sighs> Wait a minute, I thought he had a girlfriend. If you find him, bring him back here so I can murder the bastard. Yeah, I'll consider that. So, do you know where he went? Last I heard, he was heading for Seafront. Goddamn bastard. I can't even bear to look at my wife anymore. Can you even look at your wife anymore? I thought she's gone. Looks like he's trying to lose us. Off to seafront then. Some other time. Hmm. Everything seems normal here. We appear to have hit a dead end. Hold a moment. What is that on the ground? Just some funny looking berries. I'd wager those berries are poisonous. Maybe, but I'm not hungry enough to find out. Is that why the child got sick though? Ooh! We are the grass. We are the trees. We are the woods. This might be the main quest. Why do we seem to encounter nothing but odd people lately? You should talk, Vice. Ha! <laughs> As if Grim War Vice is capable of spouting such nonsense. Hang on, I don't think he's done. The dark form that governs all memories. May the words form themselves to your liking. That would be nice. No! No! <laughs> okay, okay. Black. Pure darkness. Painted over everything. Words. Scattered here and there, across the blackness. Kind words. Difficult words. Amor's words. All sparkling, in the dark, like jewels. The words were few now, but time was shorter. Grabbing the words in desperation, the tree turned to the sky. This is wrong, whispered the tree in the voice of wind through the leaves. This is not how it was supposed to be. The plan has failed. Once, long ago, the tree had remembered everything about the world. This was its task, its purpose. Oh. It shivered with something approaching joy as it collected the memories of mankind. So it, it actually is a divine tree. This was no accident. Emotions were as much a part of the tree as root and bark. Memories collected like dew on the thick green leaves of the tree. And once they had formed a web that spanned the entire world. Words collapsed into sunlight before passing through the leaves and into the pool of memory. From the pool, the words joined together to form colonies. The colonies united into whirlpools of light and the light coalesced into stars. Each star was like a child of the tree, and it loved them all. Look at my memory. A child is here, brought low by disease. He is far too young to have suffered so. Thin beyond words, the boy's skin is a shade paler than the bleached hospital sheets upon which he lies. His parents no longer visit him, for they cannot bear to watch him suffer. The doctors have long since surrendered his fate to the gods. 
The boy, too, has abandoned hope. Strange emotions, weariness, hatred swell within the dark recesses of his young heart. He tries to reject the black terror that germinates in his body, but no amount of effort or tears can drive the invader away. He has long ceased to resent his parents and doctors. Once he did, but now his pain is so great that there is little room in his heart to think of others. Only one person brings the boy comfort, a healthy young girl with tan skin and deep green eyes. She is a beacon of brightness and light in the boy's world. Her very presence is a comfort to him. But he is unable to look upon her face. Whenever they meet, the boy is filled with loathing for his own state. Soon, this loathing eats away at what joy he receives from the girl's visits. The girl will stop coming, he knows this. His every waking moment is spent in fear of this day. He thinks that if he could talk to her, if he could tell her of his feelings, that this might not be so. But this conversation never happens. The girl disappears. The boy dies alone. Whoa, that went up to like a hundred really quick. The tree scoops up this memory and carefully stores it within itself. Etched upon it is a single word, envy. Look at my memory. So the tree is showing me different memories that it's been storing so far, is what I'm getting. There is a female warrior. Her greatest enemy is a beast with red eyes that she cannot fully comprehend. When she strikes it with her sword, it turns into a pillar of salt and dies. But when the white smoke clears, a new enemy rises. And another. And another. The warrior knows that her struggle is folly, but fighting the unending stream of enemies fills her with a sense of joy and purpose. Somewhere deep in the warrior's drug-addled mind lies a vague memory of a daughter. Perhaps a child exists only in her head, the dying remnants of a powerful dream. She does not know. Her friends and fellow warriors come and go. Some flee in terror, some are eaten. She began the fight with 33 companions, but most are gone now. The warrior's body shudders. She does not understand why at first. By the time she hears the fierce low sound, the arena is already enclosed in darkness. Looking up, the warrior sees a beast so large that it blots out the sky. She is laughing. She has been doing so for as long as she can remember. Covered in blood and dirt, the warrior laughs. She laughs and laughs until the town that contains her daughter collapses into a pile of dust. This memory has been stored for a long time. It is etched with a single word, loss. Look at my memory. A red dragon falls from the heavens. Ah, that memory has been lost. A shame. It was a favorite of mine. After many centuries of existence, the tree saw its carefully labeled memories were beginning to dwindle. Once seemingly infinite, the memories now seemed ready to disappear forever. The tree did not feel sadness at this. Grief was an emotion beyond its comprehension. It did, however, have the distinct feeling that something was missing. The mountain of memories it had so carefully assembled had disappeared. The tree stretched its branches as far as it could, but new memories refused to flow. The pool of memories was a black, empty pit, a hollow place where life has once flourished. The tree had lost its purpose. There was nothing to be done but sift through the few remaining memories littering the ground under its branches. This is why the tree was pleased when the man and his companion entered the room. Well, this place is gloomy as hell. The room Wellens had entered was almost completely empty. All he could see were a few crystals scattered haphazardly on the ground. Picking up one of the crystals and peering into it, Wellens suddenly saw a familiar sight. It was the Forest of Myth, its villagers prisoners of their own dreams. 
I apologize, the tree thought. That is all that remains. As Wellen stared at the jewel, bewildered, a voice suddenly called out from the depths of his mind. The voice implored them to listen. It was an order. Following it was mandatory. Abruptly, the pair realized that they must listen. They must listen. Look! A small shadowy presence appeared from beneath the floor. It looked to be a shade. The shade grasped several jewels in its hand. More jewels tumbled out of its mouth like shards of broken teeth, sights and sounds tinkling from each one before vanishing forever. The creature was abusing the memories, treating the precious objects like a collection of cheap playroom toys. The shade appears to be consuming the memories. Is that why it's disappearing? That little thing? It's barely worth my time to kill. The tree extended a branch toward Wellens. Without a second thought, Wellens brought his blade down on the shade, tearing its stomach wide. Jewels burst from the shade and poured across the chamber floor. Look, thought the tree. There is a conviction memory I had lost, and satisfaction, and many others as well. Yes. This is good. The tree opened its mouth and attempted to speak, but no sound emerged. A millennium of silence and solitude had caused the tree to forget certain things, but rather than be upset, it greeted the development with good cheer. Focusing all its power on the riddle of speech, the tree formed a kind of makeshift vocal cord and tried again. Ahem. I... I implore... It spat out a glimmering green jewel. Hmm, one more time. I implore you. There we are. What was the color of the lost envy? <laughs> um, I remember that in the very beginning of the story. The girl's eyes were green. It spoke! The shade has intelligence and emotion. Oh, the tree is a shade. Oh, okay. Who cares? Wellens brushed Vice's comment aside as his sword sliced through the shade's right arm. The shade extended its remaining arm to Wellens. I must touch him. I must make contact. Oh, the shade is... Wait, I thought the tree was talking the whole time. Now it's the shade! It's the shade that he's killing! And it thinks! It has intelligence! The moment its fingers brushed against Wellens, the tree felt a warm sensation begin to burn. Something hot coursed through its fingers, up its arm, and out to its entire body. It was emotion, more than the entity had felt in centuries. The tree cried out in surprise and joy. One thousand years alone, one thousand years in quiet contemplation. The tree felt like it was going to break. For long centuries, the tree had been alone, its heart sealed with heavy chains, but no more. New, powerful emotions begin to take hold, causing its heart to lighten. This was more than the simple emotions it had been designed to feel. It was the beginnings of a soul. And the man was the key. This was the promise made long ago. This was how it would be released. The tree's stomach began to throb in pain, a new and unpleasant sensation. But the time was not yet right. I implore you, how many were lost by the warrior who fought the red-eyed beasts? 33. And her daughter. Okay, riddle time is over. I'm gonna kill this stupid shade once and for all. Something round and shiny fell from the open stomach and clattered to the floor. The key! shouted the book. Grab the key! The man's sword slowed. Time began to dilate around them, stretching and slowing. Time is essential. The next word must be heard. The words exploded. It became difficult to discern their meaning. The pool of memories begin to crack as infinite 
blackness burrowed its way into the wall. This world is falling apart. How can a world of letter? I implore. Most important thing. World. Which one is the right one, though? I expected this answer, but which one is the right one? All of them? The light was complete. The memories disappeared. The tree's identity began to dissolve. As the letter slowly faded, Wellens was drawn back to the real world. And the tree was satisfied. What in the... I never realized that shades were capable of rational thought. I don't care if they can tap dance and play the fiddle. Can't I just kill something without all this voodoo nonsense? With the tree defeated, we no longer have to worry about being buried in its world of letters. Unless, of course, time itself begins to rewind. Hmm... Memory tree. Huh. I feel like even the tree was capable of rational thought, but I'm glad that was over. What was that? Did we get any sort of real takeaways from that? Hmm. Shades can think, at least seemingly. I feel like we kind of knew that already though. Maybe, um, you know how the shade was saying how it couldn't speak because it doesn't have vocal cords and it hasn't spoken in so long. So maybe every time we kill a shade and we hear the children chanting noises, it's trying to speak. And all the words, all the words that we get from it, those are the things it's trying to say too. Creepy. The last time we yeah. came here, appar <laughs> apparently, um, yeah, of all the things we saw, apparently a lot of the things were like, hmm, I feel a sense of impending doom. But um, that impending doom, nah. has it particularly happened yet? Merchandise. Oh. Well, maybe Popola has some new information. Let's go see her. Very well. Okay. We. I think that was the fourth key. So, yeah, Popola should be helping us finding the last key. Hello. The weird presence has left the divine tree. And you know, it really made me think. I mean,. Why are we worshipping a tree? Doesn't that seem odd? Sometimes I wonder why we do any of the things we do. Oh, that reminds me. I have a rather interesting story for you. Would you care to read it? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I wasn't gonna read it anyway, but now I don't have to. They should give me a reward for sitting with this for so long. Oh my god. Oh, I missed the last line. <laughs> Such a fascinating tale. Are you being serious? Of course not. <laughs> Hello. Uh. <laughs> so. The shade was inside the tree, stealing the memories. Does that mean the shade? Or, um, yeah, was the shade possessing the tree? I don't really know. Hmm. Who knows? Who knows? Well, thankfully this time, it was not nearly as painful as last time. Mm-hmm. I actually kind of enjoyed that one, but maybe it was because it was shorter. Hey, Kaine. You guys solved the mystery yet? No, we got nothing. We got the key! Oh, you're talking about the child. So what's with the berries? We picked them up over by that huge tree. I thought maybe... Here, hand them over. I'm starving. Are you mad? Those berries are clearly poisonous. Even one such as you can't hope to. 
damn, these are delicious. Give me some more. Really? Well, in that case, I suppose I should try one. Uh, your bo- <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, 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 uh. I was just gonna say that your body is not made the same way as Kaina's body. I think Vice was right about those berries. My stomach feels like someone stuck a sword in there. Hey now, what's wrong? You look like... Oh no, oh no. Don't tell me you ate one of those berries. For the love of trees, those things are deadly. Quick, take this antidote before you perish. I thought I was a goner there. What kind of an idiot are you? Didn't you see the lumps? The unusual colors? Why, even a child would know better. Look, I was just trying to... Wait, did you say child? Oh crap, I bet that kid ate one of those berries. It's quite possible. And if the poison is this painful to an adult, I can only imagine what it would do to a child. Hey, Kaine, did you take the antidote? Don't eat it. God, those berries were amazing. The truly amazing thing is that your stomach is fouler than your taste in clothing. If you had genitals, I would so chop them off right now. Rip off some pages. Oh, you're bringing me back to the village, aren't you? Thank you. Just in time. Oh, but I'm scared, though. The kid. I hope he's still okay. Uh, I still can't feel my arms. Or my legs. I feel fine. Whoa. You must have a cast iron stomach, Kainé. Oh. The hussy's internal organs are as filthy as her mouth. Why do you have to be such a shithead all the time, Brooke? Yeah, man. Don't normalize insults. She might not seem like she cares, but if you insult someone long enough, it might actually begin to hurt. Especially for someone like Kainé, who... Well, it doesn't take much to guess that she was probably abused with words all the time when she was younger. How old is Kaine? Doesn't matter? She's half-shade, so... Maybe she doesn't age either. <laughs> I don't know. 